and time again You have proven You do just what you say Though the storms may come And the winds may blow I'll remain steadfast And let my heart learn When you speak a word It will come to pass Great is your faith Welcome everybody to Transformational Ministries International Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Lori. Hey, and I am your other host, Jackie. And we are here today to bring you a transforming word, a word that is geared towards literally changing your life. And I believe this is a real serious word today. It was... um. Just uh, parts of it really just really just pricked my heart today. So we're going to be talking about does this generation really know God? Does this generation really know God? Mm. And one of the things, a couple of things that I thought about is um, do we know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Because there's a lot of people that say, yeah, I know God. But the question is, what God are you talking about? Yeah. Is it the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Is it the God of Jesus Christ? Jesus, 
while his, his time here on this earth, he presented to the people God the Father, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? The question is, is this the same God that's being presented today? And, you know, there seems to be um, less or maybe no fear at all of God. And you can tell that through the things that people are teaching, things people just say flippantly, or things that are done. And I'm going to give you an, uh, uh, an example. I remember, I, 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 no, I don't, not that I remember, but I had said this to um, Jackie, and he didn't know anything about it. There's this little song piece or jingle or something that's going around, and it's called Holy Spirit Activate. People, mm -hmm. people are dancing to it and saying it, and uh, they put little video clips behind it of people doing stuff, and it's supposed to be funny. Mm -hmm. You know, or girl, you know, you better leave me alone because the Holy Spirit activate. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But it pricks my heart because do they not know who he is? Well, of course they don't. If they, mm -hmm. I'm thinking if they fully understood that the Holy Spirit is God, you can't say he's the spirit of God. Yes. God is a spirit. So he is God. Hey. But yet they're saying this Holy Spirit activate thing as if he's a joke. He's not a joke. But that's just one example of what is happening in this world. And it's so flippant and so just it, it totally disregard <laughs> for who God is. And who is doing this more than anybody? The church. Folk. The church. It's, it's like... You don't have no fear of God. You don't reverence God. Mm -hmm. The God of the universe. We're talking about. It's, it's like. It's like he's a, another, just another person. Yeah. Another thing. Just yeah. another thing. And and I, I mean. I, people. <laughs> I want to be real careful. Because I, I remember. When I was not saved. And I was drinking. I remember I had this. It was. It was. It was. I had this reverence for the Bible, but I reverenced the Bible only because somehow I knew that it was important. But yet when I was drinking, because I did not know God, I thought, you know, if you, you knew, you know, you had a Bible and you knew some Bible words or something like that, you know, that was kind of sexy. Yeah, that's what I say it. Because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I did not know God. So when you see people treating the Bible like it's nothing, or treating the name of God like it's nothing, treating the, the things of God like it's nothing, that's a dead giveaway. Absolutely. That yeah. the people do not know God. So we're going to, I'm going to, you know, I just kind of wanted to open with that for, you know, folks to know where we're going with this. But we're, we're there's a Bible passages that actually talk about the generation that does not know God. Yeah. So I'm going to um, let you jump in and well, uh, get us, you know, started with that. Well, uh, we, you know, we'll be coming from the uh, Book of uh, Judges, mm -hmm. and and cause um, um, at, at, you know, just as you were saying, um, a generation that don't know God, and you know, I was born in the fifties, mm -hmm. and now uh, so got a little age on me, and. Like in 19, 1930s and nineteen sixty, you know, God was everywhere in America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everywhere, He was on the TV. He was 
in the news. He was everywhere you look, God was there in the school, in the laws. Um, the knowledge of God. Yeah, it was the knowledge of the they, knowledge they, of they, God. They, they, they brought him in. Mm -hmm. uh, politicians brought him in uh, in the White House, uh, Congress, the Senate, the Supreme Court, everywhere in the house, in the home. Mom was saying old hymns. Mm -hmm. In other words, it doesn't really mean that a person was dedicated themselves, but God was everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good. And you got to understand that. We, we had things going on, but nothing compared to what is happening in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. You know, the 20th century, mm -hmm. you know, from 1901 to uh, 2000, that's the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And the 21st century is from uh, two, 201 on up. Mm -hmm. So there was, I mean, you saw the 19th century, that's further back from 1801 to, to, to the 1900s. Um, so we didn't, it, guns, we had guns, and there was well, alcohol bootleggers and all kind of things was going on, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but because God, well, I believe God was present and God was in the land mm -hmm, and everyone mm -hmm. was reverencing him, mm -hmm. it kept the enemy at bay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It kept the, the prince and power of the air at bay. So now it's the free fall. Well, you have, as you was talking, I... I... <laughs> I remember on Sundays, I have not had this thought in forever. On Sundays, it wasn't just the big Sunday dinner, but what was playing on the radio? It was gospel music. That's what was playing. I just remembered that. And it was such a peace and a calm in the house on Sundays. Almost like everybody shut down the foolishness, yeah. right? But... The children, young people, the, 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 the flagrant disrespect of parents and of people in general, that was not so. If somebody, if an adult came around and you was doing something, you stopped it. If the pastor came to the house, everybody, you know, just oh, yeah. calm down. Whatever they was doing. Yeah. And it was quiet. It was like a reverence. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, so. But now, my 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 son-in-law was telling me that a group of kids was driving around and smoking weed. And he said when they 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 pulled up next to him, or he pulled up next to them, he said when they got out, you know, the the plume of smoke and uh, the smell of weed. And he said he couldn't help himself. He had, he said he had to go over there and say something to them. I was expecting he was going to say they acted a fool on him and was, you know, saying whatever kind of stuff. But he said they were responding to him, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. He said he really got on them and told them, you know, what could happen and, you know, and all that. And he said they responded with, you know, yes, sir, and so on and so forth. That's a small part of how kids will respond to you now. Because now they'll cuss you out and they'll tell you to mind your own business. Oh, yeah. You know. I'll pull a gun on you. You know. You know. Um, as you was talking, you know, um I, I, I grew up in South Carolina in the in the in the in kind of a rural area and the clubs uh, my grandfather had a club. Mm -hmm. And uh, I you know, even though he was a very, very respected man and was a deacon in the church, but he still had a club and mm -hmm, probably mm -hmm. drank a little bit. But it wasn't just wide open. But at the club, on Saturday night mm -hmm. at 12 o'clock, the town police would come and shine his light in the door. That means because that was Sunday morning, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This, the club had to close. 
the one was on the outside of the town limit, they could stay up a little bit later. But anything within the city limits, mm -hmm. they didn't. You had to shut the club down at twelve o'clock Saturday night. That mm -hmm. was because it was Sunday. The stores on Sunday, mm -hmm. you couldn't buy any alcohol beverage. They weren't. Uh, many of them weren't open on Sundays. Uh, I uh, remember uh, yeah, that. Yeah. I remember that yeah. that the on Sunday stores were not open. Yeah, and, and it, so now a person is growing up in this twenty first century, like they they couldn't imagine that. Mm -hmm. There's no way they could they could they could understand that. But see, there's a generation coming. Mm -hmm. These several generation. Every generation, there's a, a, the the the. the the, the, this I, I, what I'm, it's just pulling away from God. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. generation, mm -hmm. and that been that way from the beginning of time, from the children of Israel, mm -hmm. all the way up. And there's it, it, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. What happened to Israel is happening now. It, Israel is a it was an example of what will happen when you don't honor God, oh, when you don't God. fear God. This is the result that will happen. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. Just because we're in the New Testament after the death of the Messiah, we think all things change. God is still holy. God is still reverence. He's still the same. Mm -hmm. The prophets of old warned the king, warned the people about what would happen if you turn from God. What is happening now? What prophets are doing now? Prophets is prophesying to and lawmakers, they, they and they, they, ain't, they ain't saying nothing about the judgment <laughs> of God coming upon a nation that have forgotten God. They say nothing. They just say you're gonna be blessed. Your day is coming. These false prophets. Mm -hmm. These are false prophets. Mm -hmm. I would rather not believe in a prophet at all during this time than than believe in the older prophets. Mm -hmm. I would I would rather say I don't believe in new prophets than to be deceived. Because that's not going to take me to hell. Wow, because I don't wow. believe that there. If I say if I don't believe in, I would rather I would rather say to be deceived. I don't believe in these prophets now, mm -hmm. all these apostles now. Mm -hmm. If I say that, don't 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 do not uh, uh, buy, 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 bad mouth me. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if I say that, now I'm not going to say that. Mm -hmm. But if I do say that now. Because I'm gonna look at your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. If your life is not lining up with the with the prophets of old, mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. life is not lining up with the apostles of old, then don't prophesy to me. Mm -hmm. You can prophesy to somebody, but don't don't prophesy to me. Because I'd rather not believe in what you're doing than to be deceived. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this later, but I'm reading this book. It's called Adida K. And the, it, um, it just means the teachings of the 12 apostles, first century. And I've read, and I'm going back to read this again. Basically, they were saying that if prophets, and they asked for money, they was labeled a false prophet. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's yeah. most, how many How many? Prophets that would be today, a lot of them. Well, you don't even see that. Let's go back to the Old Testament where there were prophets. You know, prophets. They weren't asking for money. No, sir. They were not. It was warning the people. Yes, yes. And and I don't want to harp on me, but I've I've said this before. I couldn't understand why my messages is always like get right messages. Absolutely. They used to bother me because it's like, you know, all these people that I know and they're preaching these messages and people are following them and they're excited about it and they cash up in them and all of that. And it was like, <laughs> I don't even get callbacks, you know. Yeah. And so, but it dawned on me, all of the messages, they get right messages. What is a get right message? Warnings. Yeah, warnings. Oh. I mean, you, 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 you're, you're like the... You're, oh, sorry, that was my grandbaby, you're, y'all. You're, you're, you're like the, the watchman mm -hmm. on the wall. When you see the enemy coming, you, you're warning the people because you don't want their blood on your hand. You're warning the people. Mm -hmm. See? Um, you know, it's like 
If I'm the people that nowadays, if I'm feeding you the word of God, you ought to you ought, you ought to give you ought to give into the word. Nothing, this, 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 none of that. I'm you, God know what you have need of, brother, sister, out there in this, in, in radio land. God know what you have need of. You don't have to beg and ask and, and burden people about no money. Give them op opportunity. That's it. Don't be. I mean, folks sometimes they be on on money, thirty forty minutes. About money, but see, these are this is a this is a different this generation. It's a different generation, and it's um, you know, we ask the question: Is this gen does this generation really know God? We're included in this generation, and you ca we have to ask ourselves: Do we know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? That's the God from the world word, not a God you done made up. God know me. He know how I am. He know the man upstairs. He know my heart. Well, if you listen to what he said about the heart, he said, who can know it? The heart is desperately, is desperately wicked. wicked. Huh? Who can know it? You can't say, oh, I know my I know my heart. I know how I am. No, because you're going to always favor yourself. We're going to always favor ourselves. If someone point out something about us immediately, we want to say, that's not me. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. then, if you allow God to show you and reveal to you, it's like humbling because you realize that is me. Yeah. But he hadn't condemned me, but he's showing me there's something you need to get right. You can't c continue on in this. Yeah. You know? But, yeah, go and, ahead. And, I, I just and, wanted to... I, I, yeah, this... Um... Because, uh, like I tell you before, I remember in fifth grade, uh, Miss Quarterback, she uh, leading us in prayer in, in school. So when you take prayer and take God out of the school, people say, you know, they always say, well, this is the act of God. Anything, an act of God, anything like destruction, or oh, that's an act of God. Mm -hmm. But now when you take God out of schools, mm -hmm. like 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 America have mm -hmm. done, mm -hmm. take God. You took him out. What you so what what, what brings in the enemy? Brown brings in gun shoot. He brings in uh, uh, mass shootings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all this other stuff. Be like, why is all this happening? Because you have let your God down. You taking you you taking the fortification that was there, and you have taken it down by the, now refusing God. Mm -hmm. By kicking God out, you kick God out of the government. Ten Commandments was kicked out. You kick, you kick God out of everything, and now you you see this is another gener a generation. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 to this, the younger generation they don't even know, so it don't, it means nothing to them. Yeah. But you know, it's it's good for them to understand that the knowledge of God is what kept a lot of children from doing things, right? They didn't steal. They didn't, they may be tempted to do it, but they didn't do it because the teachers were talking to them about doing right and doing, you know, be, behaving well based on what God had said. But it kept the teachers in check in as check. well. But now it's without restraints because you have no knowledge of God there to, to help. And that's what's, when he's, when uh, Jackie says they've taken God out, that's what he's saying, the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of God is powerful. So what do you do? Well, you've, you're coming up in a generation where this was done in the 60s, okay? Now, you know, this generation of people have kids now. Then teach them in your home. Absolutely. Teach them in your home. Absolutely. If, you, if, 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 if the dad is not in the house, mom, teach the children at home. Put the word of God in them. Yes. That's yes. the best thing you that's the best thing you could do is put the word of God in them. Put the word and the, the, well, how, and as they grow older, the word of God is gonna guide them. The word of God will pull them back mm, because mm. they got something in them. If that's they don't right. have nothing in them, they don't have nothing but at what all. The world has to offer, then you know. Uh, the baby boom was 1946 to 1964. Mm -hmm. It was about 85 
million babies born during that time. What didn't happen to the babies? But a lot of them have passed on. But what didn't happen to them? What, what, where are their standards? They still still be teaching. They, they're grandparents now because you know sixty four, but you 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 about mm. fifty eight years old. Sixty four is. And, and I was born in sixty three. I'm sixty. So they're fifty nine years old. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One one of these six, sixty nine. I mean uh, fifty nine to seventy seven. Seventy seven, born in nineteen forty six. From seventy seven, you're seventy seven years old. Mm -hmm. Why are you crazy? Why, why, mm. why, why, why mm. are you acting the way you're acting? Mm. You remember, you don't forget what you rem don't forget what was you was taught. That's right, that's right. And that's remember, because right. you were born in 46, 56, 76, 66, 76, 86. Come on, things wasn't back, things wasn't crazy as now. What have happened? You have to you have forsaken God. Mm. We are the ones that should be upholding like you the patriot of your family. You should be representing. That's right. Grandparents. That's right. That's grandparents right. now, what are you teaching your grandchildren? Mm. Well, you you're responsible. Well, I just I just found that out the other day that you know, you don't it's not that you you, you teach your children, but if you once I guess once your children are grown, once your children are grown, your teaching for as the word of God and things like that may be over. But now you start over teaching your grandchildren. You have to. That is part of the legacy is you teach your grandchildren. Whether your children are teaching them or not, you teach your grandchildren. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. but let, go ahead. Uh, I, I, um, yeah. Um, what did you say we're coming from? Uh, Judges uh, chapter 2. Uh, you can read the, the, the whole thing, but actually uh, it comes from uh, uh, chapter. Oh, you know, I'm not two, even there. <laughs> chapter two and verse ten, and I, and I, I'll, I'm a, I'm a, I'll read I'll read that passage script, but but we kind of go back because let's see, God wanted a people. Mm -hmm. You know, God wanted a people to evangelize the world. And, that, and he he did that through Abraham, mm -hmm. through Abram. He called Abram out of the air of Chaldean, a pagan country, a pagan country. See, if you're not in the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. the nation is a, is a pagan nation. The kingdom of God, you need to be in the kingdom of God. You're not in the kingdom of God. These other nations right here, there's not a Christian nation. They are a pagan nation. Mm -hmm. These are nations have forsaken God, mm -hmm. and now. They are going after everything because this nation here is a melting pot of all the nations. That's right. All the nations because when the other nations come in, people are migrate in, well, they're going to bring their own belief or bring their guards in. So America, they got all kind of stuff going on here now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? Now, now, uh, we, we know the children of Israel was in bondage for over 400 years in Egypt. Mm -hmm. That's always been, okay, for a reason. We say, well, well, look at the African, African, Africans was brought into this nation and it was in bondage for 400 years. Let me tell you something. You're right. But God, even in the midst of Israel being in Egypt for 400 years, God brought them out mm -hmm. of the land, of, mm -hmm. of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Okay? Even though Africa was brought to this country and in bondage, God eventually bought them out. That's right. There's no slavery here in, in America now, but God bought them out. And there's e still evil going on, mm -hmm. but if you're in God, God's going to bring you out. That's right, that's right. You got to trust God. You, got, you can't just say, well, then this person did this because there's prince and, prince and power of the air. There's there's spirits out there, but there's, there's a God mm -hmm. that's guiding for a reason. And whatever reason he desired, we got to say, God, not my will, but thy your will be done. That's right. And God bought, bought, bought the Africans out from bondage, and now, at the now they moving on up. We, they say, it ain't what we, it ain't, it, we're gonna keep going mm -hmm. as a people. We're gonna keep on growing, and even the enemy is still trying, trying to destroy us with one another. But it will not happen. We gonna, we gonna build. If you are a believer in the Messiah, keep praying, 
Keep seeking God and keep trusting God because he will make the difference in our lives. That's right. Amen. Amen to that. Hallelujah. Amen to that. Bill is just a reminder of uh, what Overseer just said, what Jackie just said. Amen. Amen. Now, that scripture here, I'll read it. It says, and when all the generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose mm -hmm. after them who did not know God. Now, this, this God here is Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Because when you see the capital O-R-D, that's Yahweh. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. Nor the work which he had done to, to Israel. But what work? He bought them out of bondage. They always said, the God that bought you out of, of, of bondage, mm -hmm. of Egypt. Don't forget the God that bought us out of bondage of the enemy. And that's, that's the, that's the, that, that, <laughs> whoo, help me here. <laughs> that, that, that's the, the, the scripture that we're, uh, we're coming from. Okay. Yeah. Now, did you need me to read anything? And if so, well, from I, I where? Want, yeah, I want you to start with verse 1. Verse 1, chapter 2. And, 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 and we're we, 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 we just going to, uh, we're going to just uh, see what, what the scripture okay. says. Well, I'm going to be reading from the uh, easy to read version, so you can interject mm -hmm. any time. All right, it says, um, the angel of the Lord went up to the city of Bochum from the city of Gilgal. The angel spoke this message from the Lord to the Israelites. I brought you out of Egypt and led you to the land that I promised to give to your ancestors. I told you I would never break my agreement with you. But in return, you must never make any agreement with the people living in that land. You must destroy their altars. I told you that, but you did did not obey me. All right, let's stop right there. Okay. You, that's, that's the end of verse 2, right? Mm-hmm. Now, now oh, like I said, God is always reminding, I brought you out. He always reminded you. See, don't forget the Old Testament because if you don't if you don't understand the Old Testament, you're not going to be able to receive the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Don't think about you, you are just a New Testament uh, believer. It's much, the, the old is just as good as the new because the old confirms the new. Everything in the New Testament about the Messiah, about God, you have to understand who he is because if you stay in the New Testament, you won't even know. God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You don't. You would not know He's a God of judgment. You would not know He's a God that when He says something, He means what He says. Mm. He, he said, "Look, I brought you out of the land of Egypt, and I've given you this, and given you, given you, given you this, given, given you this land." Mm -hmm. Now, you have to understand when God is saying the promised land. Of this of of the Canaanites, mm -hmm. he's going further. Be, he's going far beyond this physical land, and telling the people the land that I have for you. Because Abraham said, "God have given a city, a city that's built and founded is God and not man." Mm -hmm. So Abraham knew that what God has is was not a natural land. That's right. But this is the land of the eternal life. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond. The physical, physical land right, to right, eternal life. Right. Mm. And that's what it's all about. It's about eternal life. Not about millions of dollars, fine houses, and all the other things. It's about eternal life. What are you seeking God for? My, my, my. Mm. Eternal life. I want you to get beyond physical things and seek for eternal life. Oh, can I? Oh, yeah. that is so good because... The reason why people don't know God the way they did is because of the physical. It's they're caught up with the physical and not the the the, the eternal. They, <laughs> that's probably one of the differences is people understood that, you know, this life is just not all there is. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I just wanted to say that. Go ahead. You're, you're, on, you're on top of it. <laughs> 
And he, so he reminded them. Mm -hmm. God said, I swore this to your fathers. I promised your father that I'm, you know, and I'm not going to let it go. And I said, I will, you know, I will never. Did, what did he say? I will never break my covenant mm -hmm. with you. Mm. Never is what? Never is never. Never, never is never. It means I'm he, not going to do you it. Know, as for me. Mm -hmm. He said, for, as for me. That's what uh, Paul says. What shall separate us from the love of God? Which is the So principality, life, death, things present, things to come, height, death, nothing. In, in, in uh, 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 Romans 8 and 32 and uh, down maybe 38, 39. Mm -hmm. Nothing should be able, as far as God. And, and God told Abraham, he said, but for me, mm -hmm. not necessarily you. I will uphold my covenant. That's right. That's right. I'm going to do what I'm That's supposed right. to do. You just trust and rely on me. But the generations now is like, it's so far from God. And what have God done to you to get, a, to get us so far away from him? It's us. It's not him. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's the lust and the desires and the turning away from God. Seeking after the gods of this world, seeking after the things of this world, you know. If when you really uh, people be believing that, that you know they following God, they love God, they go to church and all. But if you sit them down and you start to ask them questions about their devotion to God, <laughs> their time that they actively see, we God is with us all the time. But there are times when we are actively seeking him. When? When we're praying. Mm -hmm. Actively seeking him. When? When we're in the word of God. So here's the thing. How often do you actively seek him? Oh, my, my, my. See, when there's no real devotion, no devotion, how can you then say you know God? Because if you know him, you, there will be devotion. Yeah, yeah. You're going to want to be with him. You're going to want to spend time with him. You're going to want to hear him. And yet, like you say, how can you say, how can you say we don't know, we, we know him, we will not want to read about him, we won't study history. Mm -hmm. And the Bible is history. We won't study history about him to know him. Mm -hmm. we, when you're studying history, you have to study to know about the presidents and and and, and, and the fa founding fathers of this nation and other things that people what they did, you have to study that. That's right. So yes. if you want to know God, you have to study the Bible That's right. about God mm, 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 because mm. it's about Him from Genesis to Revelation. You know now now God manifests Himself in a, a as an angel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know he, he 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 comes in different ways. God He says. The angel of the Lord mm -hmm. came to Gilgal and spoke. And telling them, I, the angel didn't lead them out. God led them out. Mm -hmm. God led them out of, out of Egypt. So this angel is a representation of God. Right. He said, he said I, I led you up out of Egypt and brought you out of the land of bondage. And I swore to your fathers, that I, and, I, and I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And you, and you shall, what's it say? And shall make no, you should not make no covenant with the inhabitants of the land. That's right. What, 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 what kind of agreement have we made with, with what's going on around us? We don't make covenant with the system here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we don't made another. We don't, and they broke. The, they made a covenant with another inheritance of the land with other gods. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He said, I want you to tear down their altars. Tear, tear, the altar, tear the altars down, but you did not obey me. Mm. God said, you got to come out from the world and be separate, said the Lord. Touch not the unclean things. These things going on, you got to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve the devil? <coughs> That's right. That's it's, right. It's, it's, you, you, it's, not, it's not anything between. You're going to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or are you going to serve the God of this world? Mm -hmm. Who are you serving? You know, I'm going to throw in a little um, what's going on today. And we mentioned this, I believe, last Sunday. I'm not sure. But right now, Israel 
whether you believe in them as a people or not, what they are fighting in that land is something they didn't take care of back in the day. Yeah, exactly. Had they destroyed everything, because that's what God told them to do, men, women, children, animals, whatever. He told them to destroy. Had they destroyed, when they came out of Egypt and they was taking over these lands, had they did what they were supposed to do, they wouldn't be fighting these ancient enemies that they are fighting today. It, w- it doesn't mean that they wouldn't have issues going right. on, but they wouldn't be fighting ancient enemies that they are fighting. Now, I just wanted to put that and, in there. And, and, because and, and, if you don't destroy stuff out of your family, your grandkids going to be dealing with it. And, and even, if, like it says here, is that in the last uh, verses of this same chapter, and so though them I may test, he said, you did not drive them out. When you had a chance, so now they're going to be a thorn in your flesh. Mm-hmm. They they they're going to take you through, mm-hmm. and I'm not I'm I'm not going to deliver them out, out of your, out of out of Lagos. You didn't do what I want you to read. That last uh, chapter, I mean, verse twenty two and twenty three. Verse twenty is that uh, in chapter two? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, let me go down to. All right, I'm gonna have to go to another page. Okay, verse twenty two. All right. Is it 21 and 22 or just 22? Uh, okay, you did 21. Okay, let me go. All right. So I will no longer defeat the nations and clear the way for the Israelites. Those nations were still in this land when Joshua died. And I will let them stay in this land. I will use them to test the Israelites. I will see if the Israelites can keep the Lord's commands as their ancestors did. The Lord allowed those nations to stay in the land. He did not quickly force them to leave the country. He did not help Joshua's army defeat them. See, And it was because they did not exactly eradicate these people when God told them to because they had the power from God's backing to get it done and 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 exactly they had the power to clear and just that just like we have issues in our lives going on and God comes in and cleanses us mm-hmm from our habits and issues mm-hmm. but then we'll start coming back we'll go back to some of the things that God delivered us from mm-hmm. and want to bring those things back in our lives. God said, I've delivered you from that. Mm-hmm. Why are you going back That's right. to that lifestyle? Why are you why are you still there in the lifestyle? I have delivered you. You have to walk in your deliverance. Mm-hmm. But you're not walking in your deliverance because your flesh want to you want to be you want to be pleased your flesh to please, you know, what's going your on. Your flesh you. to be pleased. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but then, and when you don't get this stuff, when you don't eradicate it out of your life, out of your family, when you're gone, that thing still feel like it's got a right. Yeah. It's got to feel like it, it, you brought it in, you kept it in, you allowed it to stay in. So now it's harassing your family, and it feels like it has a right to do that because <laughs> you did not... That, Okay, what's going on in Israel? Do they not feel like they have a right? Listen, Jackie and I was on the road for about two hours. The whole two hours, we were doing history. The whole two hours. Yes, yeah, and, yeah. What, and what I found out in through the history is that Hamas feels genuinely, sincerely, uh, like that's their land. That's but the reason why they feel like that is because they have been in that land over 600 years. But what they don't realize is that they took the land from Israel. Mm-hmm. Israel initially had the land, and then they went through all of these different conquerings, right? Yes. And so Palestine, or or, or the, the people in the land that were called Palestinians or Palestinians, they took the land from somebody else who had taken the land from Israel. Yeah, they brought them land, yeah. And so yeah. now they feel like this our land. Israel jacked up. They doing all of this to us, right? So 
and, and I'm going to be careful because I'm not taking sides. I'm just talking about what the Bible says. Uh, one of the things that Netanyahu said is that they're going to eradicate everything, right? If that's his mindset and he's coming from the Bible with that mindset, it's not wrong. Mm. Now, if it's just coming from a place of evil, you know, yeah, that would be wrong. That would be wrong. But until you can really get into the word of God, you can't argue with what's going on over there because you don't understand, and, right? And that's like because Joshua comes in and conquered the land. Mm -hmm. All the land of the Canaanites and all the ones. And, and when you start talking about Canaan, you, and you start talking about Balaam, the, the God, the, the, all those gods, mm -hmm. there was gods in the land that they had to get out. Right, they, right. They, I'm telling you. <laughs> Just a little, bring it down, because you look that excited. Me too. See, it was not necessarily the people, because they was worshiping God. When God dealt with Egypt, uh, Egypt mm -hmm. it was the gods that he was dealing with. He dealt with the gods of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now he's he's dealing with the gods of the Canaanites, Balaam. Mm -hmm. He's dealing with them. And all the so now he had to eradicate that. That's why he, when they come in, said tear down their altars. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't the people; it was the altar of these gods. That's right. And God wanted to wipe out these gods and establish Him as the ruler over the over all this promised land. Mm -hmm. He was going to be the one, but because of their constantly uh, failing and going back to worship, because that thing was in the Egyptian. And Egypt was still in them. Mm -hmm. They still kept going. That's why you can't go back. You have to move forward because when you go back, there's a God waiting at the door for you. Mm. They're waiting to ups mm. uh, possess you again. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't come. You can't go back. Don't. Do, don't go back. Keep moving forward in Christ because if you start entertaining the world and entertaining the thing around you, the enemy is waiting to get you. He's waiting to infiltrate your mind. And that's why Paul says that, uh, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The, the renewing of, of your, your mind, mind. Which is through the word of God. Through the word of God. So, the children of Israel, that's what happened. Now, hmm. it, it, let's jump down here in verse 7. It says, So, the people served Yahweh all the days of Joshua. Huh? All the, say, because God, God, Joshua, when he, the other verse says, when, when God spoke, the angels of God spoke to Joshua, then the people cried and said, yes, we will serve y'all. They made a commitment. So, say, so in verse, uh, verse 4, Sam, I'm going to read the mm -hmm. verse 4. So it was when the angel of the Lord spoke these words, all the children of Israel and the people left, lifted up their voices and wept. And when they called the name of the place, what that is, they called it. They, oh, Bokim. Bokim. And they sacrificed their to the Lord. In other words, they had a renewing of God. They had a mindset to worship God. And when Joshua had dismissed the people, the children of Israel went each to his own inhabitants to possess their land. Now, see, that's the key. They went, they left Joshua. Mm -hmm. And they went now to all the places that Joshua had conquered and that was their land, the 12 tribes of Israel. The only tribe that did not have an inheritance was the Levites. Mm -hmm. The Levites was responsible in as ministry, mm -hmm. setting up the, the, the worship in each one of the tribes. And now it says here, so the people served Yahweh all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that was with Joshua who outlived Joshua who had seen all the great works of Yahweh, which he had done for Israel. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, 
the servant of the Lord, died when he was 110 years. Mm -hmm. he, was, he lived to be 110. So all that time, they served God. All the, they, they served God. And all the times of the elders after Joshua, they served God. And they, they say they buried Joshua. Okay, then they, they went ahead and buried Joshua. And then in verse number 10, we mm -hmm. read first. Mm -hmm. When all the generation had gathered to their fathers. In other words, what that says, the generation had died. Mm -hmm. Then all the generation had been gathered to their fathers, they had died. That generation had died. Another generation arose after them who did not know Yahweh, nor the work which he had done. Why? Somebody didn't teach them. Something happened. Mm. What happened? See, there's a generation today that don't know God, not the God that our, the forefathers knew, not the God of your grandmother knew, or your great grandmother knew. Mm -hmm. See, there, there's a difference. There's a different God now. There's a different God. This That's is right. th this generation. This uh, we talk about the baby boomers, Generation X. You know, y, I don't know what you call this generation now I don't in know, the 21st XYZ. century. <laughs> X Y Z. I, I don't know this, either. My think goodness. about this generation. What's I mean. Look at the television. Yeah. Look at yeah. the media. Yeah. Look at the uh, uh, the, 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 uh, these uh, uh, stadiums. Look at what. Look at what's. Look what's what's going on around us. Mm -hmm. Look at the drugs. Look at the violence. Look at the uh, homosexuality. Look at the sexuality. And then when people are called out on what they what they do are doing or have done. There's no remorse. There's no. It's almost like look, mind your business, right? There's no remorse. No. There's no you know, conviction about it. Even when you talk to them and you say, well, you know, the Lord wants to do this. It's like there's just nothing there. It's vacant, empty. How did they get like this? Well, we can't blame nobody else. We're going to have to blame ourselves. We're going to have to do what Nehemiah did. We're going to have to say, we. Mm -hmm. oh, ne yeah. Nehemiah was down here serving the king. And what was going on in Jerusalem, I think it was Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was going on when he went before God, he said, we have sinned against you. Then you do the same thing. Now, we have to take responsibility for the fact that if the generation coming up don't know God, that means that we have not been teaching them about God. Not preaching to them, see, but teaching them about God. Now, my God, my God, I feel, I feel conviction what, in my own life. Look what then took place in the 90s with the gospel. Mm -hmm. Wealth, health, healness, wholeness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all that. See how the ministry had changed mm -hmm. from repentance and serving God to get all you can get, be your best self, all the things, that motivation, mm -hmm. speaking. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. That's not, they're, they're, they're not teaching Everybody want everybody want to get this. Everybody want to be this. They want to be that. They want to be something big. Mm -hmm. They want all the things of the world, and that's what the ministry is about. All these ministers, you can I, you can name ten, twenty of them, and you can name them because you all know them on this on TV right now. You all they all preaching the same message. Mm -hmm. They don't feel God. They're saying they are God. They are, they don't feel God. They're saying that, you know, if I if I was there, I would tell God, God, can you make something kind of homosexual? You make this. That's, that's, you know, they're, they're saying, oh, and the people just cheering. Yes, yes. These preachers are saying anything and everything, and the people are cheering and praising God. And they think they're praising God, but they're not praising God. Mm -hmm. I, I, can I, I, I'm going to interject something right here. This is something I was talking to you about the other day. I've been reading this book again. It's called the DDK, and it's the teachings of the twelve apostles. This book deals with what was being taught in the first century. Now we have the Bible here with us, mm -hmm. right? But this is like a like a bur a glimpse into what the the people were hearing 
far as what was being taught and, and teaching back then. So if it, can I share some Absolutely, of this? Absolutely, yes. All right. So now this is before the Catholics and all of that. This is what was being taught to the people, the Gentiles in particular. Okay? And I'm just going to read uh, some of it. Some of them have to uh, look up the words. <laughs> but anyway, this is just some of it. It says, a further commandment of the teachings. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not practice pederasty. And that means sex involving a man and a boy or youth. Mm. Woo. My, my, my. Now, we're living in a generation where people are saying transgenderism, LGBTQ, is a thing. And it's a real thing. But the, he, they were teaching back then, do not be having sex involving a boy or a, you, a man having sex with a boy or a youth. Okay? Do not fornicate. Do not steal. Do not deal in magic. Do not practice sorcery. Do not kill a fetus by abortion. Ooh. Okay? Or commit infanticide. That means from the, the time the baby is born to a year. Don't kill the child. Okay? Do not covet your neighbor's goods. Do not perjure yourself, do not bear false witness, do not call, some of these words I'm, I have to phonically say them, Col, culminate, I think I'm saying that right, which is make a false or defamatory statement about someone, do not bear malice, do not be double-minded or double-tongued, for a double tongue is a deadly snare. Your speech must not be false or meaningless, but made good by actions. In other words, what you say you're going to do, <laughs> you do it. Okay? Do not be covetous or rapacious, which means aggressively greedy or uh, hypocritical or malicious or arrogant. Ooh. We treat this kind of stuff like it ain't no big deal now. This is what they was teaching in the first century. So they was is. not teaching nothing about this money. Let me read a few more of them because we're looking what was te taught in the first century versus what's being taught now. Okay? Do not have designs upon your neighbor. Hate no man, but correct some. Pray for others. Where have we heard that from? Where have we heard all this from? All this is in the Word. Yeah, this yeah. is Jude yeah. right here. Uh, pray for others. For still others, sacrifice your life as a proof of your love. Well, that's not what we're being taught now. It's I love you, brother. I love you, sis. Amen. Praise God. I love y'all. You don't have to prove that. Ooh. You're just saying it. There ain't no proof of that yeah. there. The proof that you love me is what you do for me when I'm in need or I need your help or whatever. Mm, my, my. That's where the proof is, okay? Um, just a couple more. Uh, my child, shun evil of any kind. We just heard a preacher say he going to get as close to sin as he possibly can. Ooh, my, my, my. What is the difference between what they just said, which is the word of God, and what we're hearing now, you can get as close to sin as you possibly can without actually sinning. The no. fact that you even thinking like that's that, it, that's, 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 yeah. that's a you, problem. Thinking that. He says, shun evil. The, the very thought of you getting close to sin on purpose. He says, shun evil of any kind and everything resembling it. Do not be prone to anger, for anger leads to murder. Okay, do not be fanatical. The word fanatical means excessive enthusiasm for the intense devotion to a cause or an idea. That's your political stuff, your, 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 your uh, um, 
Republicans versus your Democrat. That's your church stuff. Yo, my church this, my pastor that, my church, my church, my church. That's all of that. You have mm. become fanatical now about this stuff, mm. right? Uh, not quarrelsome, not hot-tempered, for all these things beget murder, right? My child, do not be lustful, mm. for lust leads to fornication, we're, we're treating fornication like it ain't no, big, ain't no deal. big deal. It's no big deal, right? Do not be foul mouth or give free reign to your eyes for all these things beget adultery. Are we hearing that? Men, turn away. Don't be looking at the woman. Don't be lusting after her. Oh. Don't be thinking in your mind, man, she fine. Good gracious. You know, rubbing on yourself. Look at who's teaching that. That's it. Yeah, who, yeah. This is what they're saying. It's not in the church. Why, My, why is not? I don't know. I'm going to stop right there because this I, we're looking at what was taught in the first century. This is this is after Christ is gone. This is the word that's been passed on, people preaching it and teaching it. This is what they were saying. I even read one part when I told you earlier where it was like if an apostle come in town and stay with you one day, all right, good. At the most two days, but if he stayed three days, he's considered a false prophet because he ain't hustling. He ain't doing nothing but hustling now. <laughs> so that lets you know the spirit of the hustler, the spirit of the grinder that's using God, you know, word and 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 all of this right here. That's not of God. No. None of that yeah. stuff. But who's preaching that? Who's who's telling us the hustle on Facebook with my cash app and a word just is a, just, not of God? Just a it's few just, preachers are, are teaching and preaching that. Only a few. But the majority of them is... is they is, doing the same thing. Yeah. This is my cash app. This yeah. is my, You know, it's, it's, it's hard because I, a lot of times people don't want to say anything, and I'm going to put myself in there included. It's because you're afraid of saying that kind of stuff and then getting caught up yourself mm. you know because you see that you see people say preaching preaching the word of god and then they get caught up but i guess if you get caught up the thing to do is come out and say yeah. tell the truth i got caught up amen i was wrong what i was doing was not saying but but but, because every time you say but, you're canceling out uh, Yeah. what you just said. But. <laughs> Go ahead, Jack. Anyway, you know, but you own it now. That was, a, that was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, we'll tell you, read and elaborate. Then the children of Israel mm -hmm. did evil. Mm -hmm. See, a generation that did not know God. Said that, then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh and served Baal. See that? Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. who is Baal? Baal is the chief god, the chief Canaanite god. And under Baal, there comes a lot of other gods. And the main thing about Baal was material wealth and prosperity. Mm -hmm. uh, that, 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 that was, that was uh, fertile rain, vegetables, uh, whatever it, whatever, that, that's what he represents. And the children of Israel worship him because of their, 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 their he was blessing, he was supposed to be blessing their uh, land and uh, prosperity. Mm -hmm. But all the blessings come from God. Mm -hmm. It was a deception to thinking that this God of Baal was doing it but all your blessings is come from God. God is the one that gives rain. God is the one that caused earth to b b bring forth. But Baal had fooled them. So mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. they worship Baal. So Baal is an Ishka. It's, it's, it's a Canaanite goddess. Mm -hmm. That sexuality, sex, it's about sex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, Baal, mm -hmm. you know, Baal and Ishka. These are sex gods. So when you out there committing sex outside of man and woman, wife, husband and wife, mm -hmm. 
you are worshiping these gods. Mm, my God. When you out there and you when you killing babies, you are killing you are worshiping Molech. Uh, like offering up a you sacrifice. Offering Molech, and the to... nation is sixty. Uh, I think six sixty million babies have been murdered. Who are you offering that for? Molech. Mm -hmm. It's a god. Mm -hmm. All this sexual act, all this perversion, male prostitution, male on male, is perverted and is worshiping Molech and these gods. Mm -hmm. You're not worshiping the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This nation. You know, there's some, there's some, some of these nations look, you look at like, oh, these pagan nations. Uh, but they say, look here, if you commit uh, sodomy, you're going to die. That's what the Old Testament had did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you're going to die. You mm -hmm. can't come in here, these African nations, mm -hmm. but you say they're, they're, they, they, you say they're a pagan nation. But look at this nation, what this nation is doing. And you telling me this is not a pagan nation? Right. right. Look at what is happening in the nation. Violating have, the word of God. Thousands and thousands of thousands of women. Um, uh, what do you call that when you gather together protesting and they're protesting the fact that they cannot have abortion. Yeah. When yeah, they want to have an abortion. If you were sitting before God, I, and see, I know this kind of stuff really just angers people. But if you were sitting down in front of God, the creator of the heavens and earth, the creator of man, so let me say life, life, he's within, life. within creation of man is children, okay? So you were sitting and you was having a conversation with him and you, you would tell God, well, I feel like I should have the right to kill a baby or abort a baby if I want to. Now you're talking to the creator, mm -hmm. right? That conversation wouldn't happen. Yo, you, you, it you, wouldn't you, happen. You would tremble. You, you, you couldn't open your mouth. Yeah. But you have to give account to that. Yeah. Jesus says, suffer little children, forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. And God told, told Jeremiah, say, Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Yeah. And I ordained you a prophet of Israel before you was conceived. Yeah. When, when, when Jesus was conceived in the mother's womb, he said, the Holy Spirit will overshadow thee. So he was conceived as as as, as a God with us mm -hmm. in mother, in in Mary's womb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God, that that was God in the flesh. That's right. Man, of, what was it? It's just a seed that had to grow inside that woman. Suppose that had been aborted. Well, uh huh? That would be crazy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well. That's why I say you 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 know you got uh, just women just I mean protesting and marching and it's for the right to abort a child, but the only way that child was in your womb is that God allowed that child to be put in your womb, cause He designed man and woman. This is the spark of God that's in us. That that's. That sperm, that semen, that seed, right? It's a lie. And, and not, not only that, if this Ishkar, this, this sex goddess, promoting sex, okay, you committed, you worshiping her, mm -hmm. this goddess, in, in having sex, whatever, you having sex, and now you worshiping by having sex. And when you and, and then when the child is conceived, you're still worshiping by killing the child. Mm. Mm. You came in in a communion in a relationship with uh, with Ishkar, the goddess, to have sex. Now a baby has been conceived. Now you now want to kill the child and offer that child up to Molech, another uh, uh, Canaanite god. Mm. Well, that's and you know those are the kind of things that people don't know about they don't know about those type of things but part of the reason why is that you don't know the word of God at all see this is the joy of getting in the word of God 
when God speaks to you about something and you hear it, it'll bear witness with you, but you can trace it back to the word. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to find out about Ishtar. And, and you, this, you can look her up. Yeah. And they'll tell you exactly who she is. Yeah. Yeah. She's you, a sex goddess, the god of love, god of sex. And they had arenas watching sex, watching sex, watching porn, watching this. And it was a form of worship in temples. Now, see, that's, that's, that's gosh, and you see it on TV now. You see, you see your sex act on TV. Yeah, that's the same thing they did then. Yeah, well, it's starting off with with um, this is so. It's starting off with soft porn. It's starting off with first. And we go back to like Ricky and Lucy when they was on TV. They was husband and wife for real, but they were sleeping in two separate beds. Mm -hmm. Two separate beds. You never saw them close together, kissing, hugging, or none of that, right? But then one day she ends up pregnant. People had to use their imagination how that happened because they did not put that on TV. That's well, right. now you got people in the bed that it, they're having sex. You can clearly see it. They're not man and wife. They're not married mm -hmm. at all. So we've come from that to now, you can see anybody in bed. You can see two men. I used to tell you, I said, I said uh, Tyler Perry's movies, I said, watch. Tyler Perry's going to start making a movie where somebody is gay and they're going to be having sex on that show. Did that happen? You sure told me that. That's before he, that before he got real big the way yeah. he didn't. It? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I told you, I said, that, it's, it's, and it happened. It's this, I'm telling you, this society... And, the, and 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 this entertainment world, you have to do certain things to be to be relevant to make money in this kind of industry. So people who want to be actors and actresses and 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 the, in the entertainment industry, there's a price that you're going to have to pay. Mm. You, it, there's a price you're going to have to pay to be big, to be big, to be irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you're suing, you're going to have to pay a price. That's right. And these big time uh, celebrity preachers. Already in 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 this uh, uh, organization, uh, what they call it when they got the little things, the signs, the Illuminati, Illuminati, and all these other things. There are big time ministers already in that, because and they're p pushing. I'm telling you. It's, well, and so let me tie that in to how that affects the church. If this is what you're following, if this is where your devotion is. You're following your these money. shows and, you know, you're following this stuff. And this has shaped your mind and your life about how God is and stuff like that. That God just wants you to be rich. He just wants you to have this and have that and be able to go when you get ready to go. Then you don't know God. You don't know him. You don't know God. You know the God of this world. Why am I saying that? You can go to the scriptures and find out. In Matthew chapter 4, yeah. what did the enemy offer Jesus? Yes. He said, I'll give you everything. Yes. yes. You're going to read, you're going to pull it up. I'll, I'll pull it up here. Yeah. He said, I'll give you everything if you will worship me. If yeah. you're willing to worship me. Okay. Matthew 4. Matthew 4. Uh, yeah, and see which one I'm going to read here. Well, I'll just read the whole thing. Then. then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, commanded these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Then the devil take him up a little into a holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, You shall give your angels charge over thee, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus Said it, it is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord thy God. And again, the, this is the one that you talk about. And 
But the devil take him up into a high exceeding high mountain mm -hmm. and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world mm -hmm. and their glory mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and said unto him, all these things I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. He said unto him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord thy God and only him will you serve. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's what you just said. All the king, all the power, mm -hmm. all the glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what the enemy does. See, we're calling it the Illuminati and we don't even know what we're talking about. We don't know, but scriptural wise, we know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what he did to Jesus. Do you think that he's not doing that to regular man? He's taking them up into these meetings with these high up people and letting them know that we'll make you famous, we'll make you a star, but you got to do this. And whatever that is, is their form of worship of the enemy. Absolutely. See, that's how that plays out in the natural. We call it the Illuminati. Whether it's called that or not, that's the high place. See, people don't realize there are places here on this earth where where people have high positions and they're able to wheel and deal and control all kinds of stuff, right? I think Hollywood is just one of those places. Yes, one of those, yeah. But I want to go back to something else you read. He said you will not live by bread alone. Bread deals with the physical life. Mm -hmm. Food, stuff, that, that just deals with the physical life. But he said, but... By every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, that lets you know, in order for you to truly live, <coughs> you got to have the word of God. You got to have the word. You have got yes. to have the word of God. And I'm going to tell God, thank you for that revelation right there, because I did not know that when he took Jesus up to these high places, you know, the scriptures in um, Ephesians talks about these uh principalities yeah, and, 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 and in high places and all yeah. yeah and all of that well how does that manifest it manifests in the, the, the these spirits getting in people absolutely otherwise nothing would be done mm -hmm. so the enemy has to get in people and, um, to be able to make a lot of this stuff happen yes yes exactly and it, it's I'm telling you this thing you you I, it's, it's, you need the word of God. Yeah. You, 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 you need the word of God. It, it's all, you just need the word of God. You have to have it. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to know. It's the word of God that transforms yes. and changes your mind. Because the way the world is set up, everything is so appealing. Getting on social media, dancing and showing your butt and popping. I mean, I saw Christians do that. I saw Christians. Next thing you know, they was yeah. on social media and they were, I'm talking about preachers. Yeah. People and, and, calling themselves huh, apostles. What do they call that? Twerking and whatnot and all that stuff. You know, I, I, I saw that. And you see people that's not professing this or that or not, and they're doing what they do. But when you start seeing your leadership, not necessarily my leadership, but I'm saying people yeah. that are professing to be leaders, they're out here and they're on social media and they're dancing and doing stuff. And you're asking yourself, what is that about? You can tack a scripture onto that, but you're still glorifying yourself. Exactly. You still... <laughs> Why are you putting videos on yourself? I've done it. I've done it. And then I look at it and say, What's the point of this? Oh, I'm trying to encourage somebody else. No, you're not. You're not trying to encourage nobody else. You're trying to show yourself and what you're doing. I mean, we got to stop lying to ourselves. We, we keep thinking that we're glorifying God. How are we, how are we glorifying God? You don't see none of this. Well, Lori, that's dumb for you to say that because they didn't have social media then. Then that, that tells me we probably better. We probably ought to be very careful then with social media. Exactly. It's, 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 you know, the enemy, the enemy uh, manifested technology. God wanted the knowledge will increase. So knowledge is increasing. 
So you you go you know just because like you know they got they got stuff going on now. Like I was telling you before that even the Amazon they, they got the palm thing that you 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 can swap your palm over a, a, a light and then identify who you are to open up a door or something like that. These things are setting away for the mark of the beast. Mm. Your right hand or your forehead. Mm. The enemy, the enemy have that technology. And and this AI, this artificial artific intelligence, this, this stuff. And you, you sit there like, oh, it's great. You, you better be looking at the Word of God. You better be prepared for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. You you you, you need to be looking for that because, like you said. The rapture of the church is what's, is the, the dead in Christ arising. Well, see, that's what I was thinking. And I shared this with Jackie earlier today. He was in the Word and he was reading. And this hit me that, so, you know, back in the biblical time, people would drop down dead. Yeah. Ananias and Sapphira, the one that put his hands on the cart. Uh, I can't think of his name right now, yeah, but he put his hands on the cart where the Ark of the Covenant was. Drop down dead. Woo. And it's like, why are people not dropping down dead? They don't need to drop down dead now. They don't need to. Because what's going to happen is the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the mm -hmm. air. What does that mean? That means that all this foolishness that's going on, all this fakery and trickery and all of that stuff, Keep it up. Because when the Lord returns, whether you're dead or whether you're still alive, if you in that foolishness, you're not getting up from the dead. You know, not that, not that time. And, and not that time. And then if you, all of this fakery and foolery and all of that stuff going on, the, the, the return of the Lord, you're not going up. Which means that you're going to have to go through whatever it is. I'm on a mission, Jackie, but it's not a mission that I can make happen. It's a mission I want to happen, and I want the Lord to have his way in my life, you know. Mm -hmm. Teach me, show me, yeah. you know, correct me. And, 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 you know, and I will say this. I know what time is winding down. I will say this, that even though the children of Israel... A generation came up that did not, especially when you're talking about the judges. They found what was going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. They repent. Mm -hmm. And then when they repented to God, the mercy of God was there. And God would raise up a judge to deliver them because he allowed the enemy to come and oppress them and put them and bring them into bondage. Mm -hmm. But then God would raise up a judge. Gillian, Samson, Deborah, just to name a few of them, he would raise them up and deliver them. And then when they when they deliver, they served God for a while, but they still would go back. So what I'm saying to you today, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you're out there and you don't know the Lord, or you out there and you're following the wrong people, repent and ask the Lord to forgive you and get back on the right track. And if you don't know him, repent, ask him to come into your life, invite him into your life. That you will be saved from the wrath of come because there is going to be a wrath. The judgment of God is coming. Well, I what I what I just put down is also read Psalms one hundred six because Psalms one hundred six shows you how Israel would get caught up, cry out to God, God would deliver. They get caught up again, they would cry out to God, and God would deliver. That's not that's not what we want for our life, but it does show you the faithfulness of God. So if you're, you know, as you're hearing uh, Jackie uh, minister from this judges too, you know, yeah, they there was a generation that did not know God, but as you hear about God, the response is to repent, to ask God to forgive you, and one you didn't know, but two now you know you're learning. You know, pray for his help yeah. to live the way he wants you to live. But for those of us that do know, we need to repent and turn back to God. 
Absolutely. Repent and turn back to God. And actually, if you if you find yourself on the wrong road, you know, get on the right track, get on the right road, mm -hmm. that narrow road, and the road that may be not popular to to people. You out there for, for popularity, you you on the Broadway. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people are going on Broadway, and you following the, you following. I'm following the crowd. Mm -hmm. This is where I'm. But they're leading you down a road, lead, leading you down a road of destruction. Yeah, yeah, definitely don't want to. Uh don't want to be on that road. I know, you know, for some people, it's like when they um, click on a Christian podcast, they just want to hear something that's going to make them happy. I want to say this to you. Happiness is fleeting. It comes and it goes. But God's joy is eternal. But sometimes his joy comes after chastisement, mm -hmm. after correction. <laughs> because now you know that you're headed in the right direction. If you're headed in the wrong direction or you're lost, how then can you be happy or how can you be joyful? But if you are corrected and pointed in the right direction and then you go in that direction you can experience the eternal joy of God that means that you can have that joy every day and then the full manifestation of that joy will come when this time mm -hmm. on this earth is over so don't be looking for messages that appeal to your flesh don't be looking for messages that just make you feel good and happy for the moment. Look for messages that's going to bring about the real joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said the joy of the Lord is our strength. His strength yeah. And his presence is the fullness of joy forevermore. Ooh. Amen. He said it. So don't be afraid to listen to a message that may spank your butt. That's like you as a parent getting on your child so you can bring out the best in them. God does the same thing. He's not always telling you, I'm going to give you this and I'm going to give you that and I'm going to do this for you and do that for you. He's not. He wasn't telling the people in the Bible that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> on occasion, yes. But all the time, no. He provided for you. He just provided what they had need for. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to get ready to go. we about five minutes over. What, um, Jackie, you want to pray for us as well, a we people? Can, we can. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the word today. God, we praise you right now. And I pray that we pray for this generation now, this um, the 21st century generation. God, we it's so much going on. I pray that preachers begin to teach the word, preach the word of God. Because the word of God is can save and 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 set people free, Lord. And we we don't want to dilute the word because we don't want a word to have lost its power because we've added different things to it. We want a word that would transform our lives. Praise God for you. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we thank you for a good word. The word of God is quick and it's powerful and it's sharp and to it is sword and piercing and Son of the divine, the joints of the marrow, the bones, it in this discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. We help us, O oh God, with the word of God. Help us, O oh God, that those who have gone the wrong direction, God, and help them to repent and get back on the right road, Lord. And we thank you. Thank you for the examples. You said the old thing was written for our example. Things in the in the Old Testament was written for our example. That that we are learned from what happened in times of old because God you are the same yesterday today, and forever you never change Lord and we thank you we know that you watch your word that you might perform it so help us oh God to to seek out what you have said and follow your word God and help us not to go on Broadway but look for the narrow path Lord that lead to life because we have life the life is in the word God there's life in the word so we thank you we ask you to bless those who are Hearing this word today, and we'll hear it later. Change their lives, God. 
We know the word of God will change a life and sanctify them, set them free. We thank you for those who are hurting God, those who uh, don't seem like they have any hope and they want to uh, end their lives. I pray, God, that you'll send, them, send somebody to them and encourage them. Uh, those who uh, don't have a whole lot, let them know that, God, you you will provide for them also, Lord. If you take care of the sparrows of the field, of the, of the air, how much more you'll take care of us, Lord. And we want to thank you and praise you and give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, we're going to get ready to get up out of here. And you guys have a wonderful rest of uh, your Sunday. And, you know, take a, a little break and spend time with your family. But when you can, you know, go back and read the scriptures. Get back in the Word and see what else God wants to say to you. Okay? We thank you. We receive God's forgiveness today through repentance. Turning from dead works even in our mind. Dead works in our mind. And we receive God's forgiveness in Jesus' name. You guys be blessed. And we are uh, out of here. I guess today we're not going to play any music. We went over a little bit. So let's just praise God. Amen. Amen. Amen.